And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to be eating one of my favorite things to eat, and that is spaghetti. I adore Italian food and especially spaghetti. Just love it. So today we're going to make spaghetti with a two meat meat sauce. We're going to use ground round and we're also going to use some Italian sausage. So that's where we're going to get started. We're going to have salad and bread to go along with it. Now in my pan, I have a little over a pound of ground um, round. You could use ground uh, sirloin or ground chuck. I would make sure that if you use anything um, with a, a higher fat content than ground chuck that you drain it off. But this is ground round and it's very lean. And we just want to get that browning real quick like. Let me make sure my eye's on. And I have a great big pot of water that I'm going to bring to a boil to cook our spaghetti in. Now here I have just some link sausages that you can buy in the section back there where you get the, the Polska kibasa and the hot dogs and lunch meat and that kind of thing. I take the casings off. Let me show you how to do that. Uh, sausages like this come with a casing on it. Just take a knife and just run down one side of it and it peels right off. Now here is where you can use whatever you like and just discard that casing. You're not gonna eat that. You could use mild sausage, Italian sausage, which is what I'm using today. Or you could use the sweet, which is not sweet like you think of a, 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 a sweet pastry type sweet, sugary sweet. It just means it has fennel in it. This particular one, I'm just gonna use my fingers and kind of crumble it up, it's not cooked. So we need to brown it in with the beef. But this one is mild and it is Italian sausage. This is not breakfast sausage like you would uh, fry it for breakfast. Although I guess you could eat this for breakfast. This is Italian sausage. So it's flavored with, you know, Italian seasonings and spices and um, different things in there. So it, it's still, it's a ground pork product. If you don't like sausage, you could leave it, leave it out. But I find that when you blend the two, it gives you a total different flavor. I make spaghetti umpteen different ways. Sometimes I just use marinara. Sometimes I use just a meat sauce. Sometimes I do a bolognese sauce. I do, you know, puttanesca. I do all kinds of different kinds of spaghetti sauces, pasta sauces, because I really do. This is, if I had to pick a favorite type of food, for me, it most certainly would be Italian. There isn't any kind of Italian food that I know of that I don't like. So I just adore Italian. My dream, you know, you hear people talk about their bucket lists. My bucket list is to go to Italy someday and eat my way through the Tuscan side, the village, the mountainside of Tuscany. I just could, I would really like to just spend a lot of time there and just eat my way through Italy. To me, that just sounds like heaven on earth. But in the meantime, I can bring Italy home to my kitchen through its cuisine because I tell you, there's such a variety. A lot of people think that, you know, it simply just means Italian food, just means spaghetti, and most certainly it does. But there are all kinds of different types of things that are Italian food. Oops, I forgot one sausage here. Let's go ahead and put him in. Now, this makes quite a bit of sauce, and if you have any left over, it freezes beautifully. Let it cool and put it into, you know, maybe you're just feeding... Uh, the two or three of you put half of it in a container and freeze it. And then when you don't have time to cook dinner one night, take it out, thaw it in the microwave, heat it up, and there you go. You've got dinner done. So we're just going to let our meat brown away and render out all of its goodness out of there. And let's put this over 
in the sink. And let's get started on the next part of this, which is some veggies. Now, I like, in my spaghetti, I like green pepper and I like onion. If you have a red pepper, by all means, you could put a little red pepper in there. If you had uh, a roasted red pepper would be delicious in this. You could use anything you like. Carrot shredded up real fine in a spaghetti sauce brings just a wonderful sweetness to it. But this is the basics. This is just a green pepper and an onion. Because really the star of this sauce is the meat and the tomatoes. So we just want to keep it simple. You want to kind of dice this up sort of fine. Not, not real big chunks. We're going to saute it after that kind of browns out a little bit, you know, renders out some of its fat. I love veggies and I'm on a quest to get more vegetables into my children's diet. You know, you see the boys on here with me and they're good little cooks, but they just are not veggie eaters like I wish they were. And I heard a, a lady say one time that vegetable eaters are not born, they're created. So, now if I was making this for my children, I would dice this very, very fine and they'd never even know it was in there. But they're not gonna be eating with me today. So we're gonna leave it in a little bit bigger chunks. Just kind of put that to the side. I heard a thing once that said, it takes 10 tries, tastes of something, before your taste buds decide that they like it. So if you're like me and you're on a quest to get more vegetables into your family's diet, try it over and over and over again. And the boys sometimes get upset with me because if I'm cooking something different for dinner, you know, I'm like, you have to try it. You have to try that roasted Brussels sprout or broccoli or whatever it is that I'm cooking. You have to at least taste it once and swallow it every time. And it's the same story over and over. Mommy, I already tried that. And I'm like, nope, you got to try it again. <laughs> so we're, we're working on things. I know so many of you are doing the same thing I am because I hear from you. How do you get them to eat? Now, listen, I'm working on it just like you are. They, they love to cook. And Aaron is much more adventurous in the kitchen than Austin. Aaron will try anything uh, at least once. He may spit it out, but he'll try it. So we're just, like I said, if you're making this for your children, dice it a little finer and they won't even know. It's a meat sauce. They'll eat that and just shred it up. I sneak veggies in every way I can. I shred them real fine and put them into meatloaf and whatever I'm cooking that night. I am convinced, and I'm not a, a, a nutritionist, a dietitian, or most certainly not a physician, but I am convinced that a great big portion of our health problems today are simply by our diets. We don't eat enough fruits and vegetables and whole grains and that kind of thing. So we're, we're gonna try to work on that for each other. I'm gonna give you some ideas and if you have any ideas, you let me know too. Now that's browning up really good. I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm just gonna let this continue to brown. Then I'm, we're, when we come back, we're going to get these veggies in there and get the, build the sauce, and then we're going to start on the salad and the bread. I'll be back with you in just a minute. Welcome back. Now we're going to add our onion to our browned beef and sausage, our onion and our green pepper. Mmm, smells so good. I love the smell of onions sauteing. Just love it. Stir that in. And then we're going to add some garlic, and I'm just using the pre-chopped garlic to equal about three cloves. 
That's about the amount you want. Put that in the sink. Stir that in. Mmm, smells so good. Just kind of get that going. You want to just soften those onions and the um, bell peppers a little bit. Now, we're going to add, before I add my liquid, I find if you put your dried herbs and spices in your recipe, before you add all your liquid, uh, it, it really, the oils bring out the natural flavors of the herbs better. This is a couple of tablespoons, because this is a lot, of just a dried Italian seasoning blend, which is dried basil and thyme and rosemary and oregano, those kinds of flavors that you associate with Italian food. And then I'm going to add, this may be something many of you have never tried. This is fennel seed. You've seen me use it a few times on here before. You know, I guess if I had to pick out, rosemary's my favorite, but if I had to pick my second favorite herb and spice to use, this would be it. It's fennel, and it just comes in seeds. Let me taste one. It's got a anise-type flavor. I love it. I make lots of recipes with fennel seed. Couple of teaspoons of fennel. Oops, let's get back in there, guys. And I just want the oils of the meat to kind of bring out the flavors in that. Just kind of let that hang out for just a minute. Now we're going to add some salt, about a teaspoon of salt. I use kosher salt always. And then some fresh ground pepper in there. Mm, I wish you could smell that. Turn it down because we're going to add our tomatoes. Then we're going to add our tomatoes. Now, I like a little chunkier sauce. If you don't like chunks of tomato in your sauce, then you would want to add just all tomato sauce. But I'm going to add a couple of cans of just diced tomatoes, liquid and all. Don't drain them. I believe it. My pan may be too small here. Let's get those stirred in. My water's boiling away over here for my spaghetti. And then I'm going to add a big 28-ounce can of tomato sauce. Mm. So that's two of the small 14-ounce cans. I think it's 14.5-ounce cans of tomatoes uh, diced up. doesn't matter if you get the petite or the regular, whichever you like. And then one 28-ounce can of tomato sauce. And that's it. We're just going to kind of let that simmer and let those flavors blend. Turn it down to low. Simmer whatever's the lowest setting on your stove. Cover it and let it just sort of simmer away for about, you know, 20 minutes or so is good. Uh, the longer the better. If you can let it simmer for like an hour, that'd be great. You know what you could do is do this step the night before. And then in the morning, put it in your crock pot and let it just unload while you're gone to work. And then when you come home, it just will be fabulous. So, you know, as little as 30 minutes, but the longer you can let it simmer on low, the better. So let's get started on our bread mixture. Now, I have a loaf of just Italian bread that I bought at the bakery. And I'm just going to kind of cut it in half. And here's where you can let your imagination go crazy. Because you can use whatever kind of fresh herb that you like. I have made these butters. We're making a compound butter. I've made them with thyme. I've made them with rosemary. I've made them with uh, tarragon and just any and all kinds of herbs, whatever your family likes. One stick of butter softened at room temperature. I like unsalted butter. And then some parsley. This is flat leaf Italian parsley. Yeah, let's see here. Let's get, oh, about 
I don't know, a fourth of a cup. It brings such a earthy, um, grassy, if you will, flavor. I love flat leaf parsley. So many people think of it only as a garnish. And I find the young tender shoots up next to the stem are fine. You don't have to pick off all those little leaves. Just cut up the stems with it. Mince it kind of fine. And we're going to make a compound butter. In the summertime, I have on my back deck at my house, I grow a little herb garden just in flower pots. And I, I just grow all kinds of different things. And what I will do is, you know, herbs tend to multiply very, very quickly. And as they get more than what I'm using, I will take butter, soften it, and I'll make my compound butters using whatever kind of herb I want to and put it in my freezer. And then when I'm having a you know, piece of grilled meat or bread, toast, whatever it is that I want to put it on vegetables, then I take my compound butters out of the freezer and they've got their fresh herbs like you would get in the summertime. Because you know, herbs sometimes can be a little expensive if you buy them in the grocery store. So I encourage you, if you've got a flower pot, flowers are beautiful and I love them, but take a couple of those flower pots, get you some little seed uh, plants anywhere. Any, any place that sells flowers basically will have the little herbs, you know, for a dollar. And then put them in your flower pot and let them grow in a sunny spot. Pinch them off. The more you use them, the more they'll grow. And we're going to add this to our, you know, I got a little more than what I want. So you know what I'm going to do with the extra? Get right in here in my sauce. That'll be delicious. Just let that simmer in there. That'll be so good. I use unsalted butter, so I am going to add just a touch, maybe a fourth of a teaspoon of salt and some pepper. I'm just going to stir this all together, mix the herbs in with the butter. Take a fork and just kind of mix it all together in there. Smash it in with a fork. Your butter needs to be at room temperature. If it's not at room temperature, stick it in the microwave for just a second. Don't do too long. You don't want it to melt. You just want it to be softened. Maybe 10, 15 seconds, depending on your microwave. And then take one half of your bread. We've made this kind of thing on the program before. I do this a lot with different kinds of bread. A little offset spatula. Take one half of your loaf and put your butter on there. I'm just gonna put the butter on there, we'll wrap it in tin foil and get it in the oven over the break. And when I come back, we're gonna get the pasta in and get the salad dressing going. I'll be back in just a minute. And welcome back. Now our sauce is simmering, our bread is in the oven, and our pasta water has come to a boil. Always, always, always salt your pasta water after the water comes to a boil, liberally, couple, three 
teaspoons or so. Because if you put it in there before the water's boiling, it won't dissolve. It'll go straight to the bottom of your pot and it will what you call pit the bottom of your pot, which means it'll scar it and, and it just will, it can ruin your pots. So never add your salt until your water is at a boil. I'm gonna add, and I'm doing the cardinal sin, so to speak, of Italian people, I break my pasta. I just do, I know I hear them all the time. Don't break your pasta, but I do, because I like it in shorter lengths. So that's my way. If you don't want to break it, don't have to. And you can use any kind of shaped pasta that you want. You can do, um, you know, penne, rigatoni's, whatever you want with this kind of sauce. I wouldn't use the real fine angel hair because this is a heavy, hearty sauce. So you want something that can kind of hold up to it. If you can find bucatini, which is a hollowed and I find I can find it now. Um, it's, it looks like spaghetti, but the inside is hollow like a straw, a little small straw. This is a wonderful sauce for that because the sauce will go down inside those little nooks and crannies. Now we're gonna make a salad. We're gonna add our lemon. We're gonna do the juice of a lemon. And I've just put a small strainer over my bowl because I don't want the pits in there. And you've seen me make salad dressings before. And I, I just tell you, they're so inexpensive to make yourself, and they taste so much better than the bottled things that have so many chemicals and preservatives in them. And I really like vinaigrette-type dressings. And I find that most people do. Now, my family definitely does. Not to say they don't like the occasional ranch and that kind of thing. And we've made different dressings on here. It's just this particular one happens to be the one that I like. I like a lemony vinaigrette type thing. I have about a teaspoon of dried oregano. I want to add about, I don't know, a spoonful. It's not rocket science, just whatever amount you like of Dijon mustard. I want to add a little bit, and I like the coarse ground because I like to see those little mustard seeds. But if you don't like that and you want to just use regular smooth, go right ahead. I want to kind of put my salt in there in the, in the acid, which is the lemon juice, to sort of dissolve that salt. Mix those things together. Then I'm going to add a little bit of red wine vinegar. I don't know, about a fourth of a cup of red wine vinegar. Now my taste tends to run a little more to where I like the acidicness of uh, dressings. I like it to be a little more vinegary. If you like it a little less vinegary and a little more smooth with the olive oil, then just add a little more oil than what I do. Then while I'm whisking, this is the place you want to use your extra virgin olive oil for flavor. And you know, it doesn't completely emulsify, but that's okay. It's all right. Just, you know, get it to where it mixes, and you might leave your whisk in there and then, you know, re-whisk it when you're getting ready to serve. To go along on my salad, now I just have beautiful greens here. I'm gonna add some cucumber. Now I leave the peelings on my cucumber. Sometimes I'll seed, sometimes I don't. It's up to you, whatever you like. If the seeds are big, I would seed them. I'm gonna dice this up. Just some cucumber. And this is where you can use your own, whatever you like. I, I happen to love cucumbers. So I'll put a little cucumber on my salad and a little bit of radish. I really like radishes. I like that peppery bite. In the summertime, my mother grows a garden and we will pick those little radishes when they're just barely big enough and we will put them on butter on bread and it's wonderful like that. And just a little bit of radish. If your family doesn't like radish, then leave it out. That's okay. It's up to whatever your family likes because that's who you're cooking for. And then just drizzle a little bit of your dressing over there, and that's it. That'll keep in the refrigerator, you know, a week or more. You might have to stir it back up, but that's okay. So by all means, just when you're getting ready to serve, put your dressing over the salad. And you can take one of your little green leaves and taste it for seasoning. Mm. Nope. Doesn't need another thing. Absolutely delicious. I like vinaigrette type dressings. 
this would be a wonderful thing to make in the summertime or if you, if you have you know, fresh produce that you're gonna grill. Marinate your um, zucchini and squash and peppers and whatever you're putting on your grill in this dressing. Marinate it for about an hour and then put it on your grill and then take the excess marinade and brush over it as it's cooking. It's delicious. So salad dressings aren't just for greens. Let's check our sauce. Mm -mm -mm. It's just simmering away. Our pasta's cooking. Let's check it. And our bread is probably about ready to pull out of the oven. Let's see how our pasta's doing. There's only one way to tell if pasta's done. Much to taste it, and it needs a couple more minutes. We're just gonna let that cook. Let's get the bread out of the oven. All right, now our pasta's done, our sauce is done, our salad is done, and our bread is done. So we're just gonna put some of this sauce over the spaghetti. Oh, so good. And then you cannot have spaghetti without cheese. It's just not, at least at my house, you can't. <laughs> So we're gonna add some freshly grated Parmesan cheese on top of our spaghetti, and there you go. And here's our salad with our wonderful little lemony dressing on there, and our bread. Let me get the right knife here. Whoops, wrong one. Let's get the serrated knife and our beautiful bread. Now I'll tell you what I did do before I put it in the oven. I forgot to tell you to sprinkle a little bit of your Parmesan cheese on there. So I did add a little bit of Parmesan cheese. To our bread and then just serve it alongside your spaghetti. Look at that beautiful little mixture in there with the the cheese and the parsley and the butter. Couldn't be better. There you go, an easy, quick, simple, and fast cooking spaghetti with two meat meat sauce, a salad, and some beautiful bread to serve your family tonight. Thank you for joining, and I will see you next time on Everyday Manna. Thank you for watching Everyday Mana with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Mana, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.